Hi, I'm Willie C. and today we're going to uh, take a few minutes to look at uh, how to process what's known as a high dynamic range photographic image. Uh, there are times, uh, as remarkable as these cameras are, that uh, they really can't capture a scene where there's some very, very bright areas and some very, very dark areas. Uh, for example, uh, in one particular scene last uh, year what I found was that I had a situation where an ice storm had just happened and the clouds were clearing out and the sun was low in the west and the grass and the hay in the fields was coated with rime ice and uh, the sunset was spectacular but it had very very bright areas in the sky and very very dark areas on the ground uh, so I couldn't really capture that in one image if I uh, tried to get it just right and exposed for the everything on the ground I would have these areas where the sky was totally blown out. If I kept stopping the camera down or changing the shutter speed I would see more and more detail on the sky but as I saw more sky detail I ended up losing information and detail that was on the ground where the ice was and everything else. So I had a situation here where there was uh, such a wide range of exposure values, brightness values, that a single frame could not capture it. And what you can do in those situations is you can take a number of photographs of the same scene at different exposures and combine those uh, in lots of different ways, but we'll use a uh, software package known as Photomatics. To get the exposures, you have to set your camera up to take the same scene but at different exposures. In this case, this camera I can set up automatically okay, with a technique known as exposure bracketing where I can have it take five images while I'm holding it in place. So I set this up, I point at my scene and boom, 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 rat-a-tat, I get five shots that I can use for that particular sequence. Each of those pictures that I just took had a different exposure. Okay. I started off with one at just the right exposure and then one that was two steps too bright, one that was one step too bright, and then two additional images that were one step too dark and two steps too dark. Now even the most inexpensive point-and-shoot cameras now have exposure bracketing settings so look for them on yours uh, and you'll be able to capture anywhere from three to seven images of the same scene at the same time but with different exposure values. Once you have your pictures captured on the computer, yeah, there's a number of different software packages. I'm going to be using a package called Photomatics which is created by HDRsoft.com. Uh, it's inexpensive I believe I got this package for $69, uh, so you can check into that. Uh, Photoshop, if you have that program, has some built-in high dynamic range uh, functions in it. And there's other software packages that are available uh, as either plugins to software you might have or a standalone program such as this. Okay. Very simple program, very spartan in details, not much confusion. Very simply, I'm going to select on Create HDR Image and then it asks me to go in and find my pictures. I have the five of the storm scene. I can open those up. All right, after a few minutes, the images will all be lined up in the software. All the parts will match up and overlap properly, and then it'll generate a high dynamic range preview. This currently is unprocessed. Okay. We can't really, on any basic monitor, you can't display all the information from five pictures. Uh, so it gives you kind of a thumbnail look at things. And this is really the check to make sure that I've got the focus I want and that things are overlapping the way I want them to, which in this case it does. Then I select the tone mapping option, and that's the tone mapping option is where the program takes the best tones from each of the five and blends those all into a single image. I like that. 
So now I've got properly exposed ice here. I've got, I can see the detail in the trees, and I've got all the cloud and sky and sun detail I wanted to have. Okay. I process that, and after a few minutes, my final product will be done. Hopefully you enjoyed this quick excursion into high dynamic range photography. Uh, go on the web, put in HDR photos, and you'll get some pretty spectacular shots to look at. It's becoming a pretty popular way uh, to stylize images as well as to capture scenes that uh, before you just couldn't capture uh, without having some other special techniques uh, and other special filters. So, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.